Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. Remember the story about the stolen 100 kilogram big maple leaf coin? I've covered it in prior videos. Well, the trier, trial is going on now. And uh, this was uh, made aware to me by the stacking nerd and Dean Shute. So four men go on trial for a giant gold coin heist from Berlin Museum. The men accused of stealing the 100 kilogram big maple leaf in 2017 heist. It involved a ladder, a wheelbarrow, and a getaway car. Four men have gone on trial in Berlin over the spectacular theft of a giant gold coin the size of a car tire with a market value of 3.3 uh, .3 million uh, pounds or 3.75 million euros. And you can translate that into dollars. Um, it's pretty, pretty pricey. The men stand accused of stealing the 100 kilogram big maple leaf from the Bode Museum by breaking in through a second floor window, smashing through a bulletproof cabinet, wheeling the coin through the museum on a roller board, then using a rope and wheelbarrow to transport it across tracks and through a park to a getaway car. A theft in the early hours of the 27th of March in 2017 stunned the German police, or stunned the German public, not least because of its audacity and old-fashioned simplicity and the fact that no alarms had been triggered in the museum. The court heard the brothers uh, Waiki Remo, 24, and Ahmed Remo, 20, and their cousin Wissam Remo, 22, allegedly execute the dramatic nighttime heist with the help of a school friend who had started work as a contract security guard at the museum just weeks before the theft. And that's how they were able to do it, without triggering any alarms. The fourth suspect was identified, according to German cust court customs, as Dennis W. If found guilty, the suspects face up to 10 years in prison will have to pay back the value of the coin. Wow. <laughs> Prosecutors assume that the coin, 53 centimeters in diameter and 3 centimeters thick, embossed with the head of Queen Elizabeth II and produced by the Royal Canadian Mint in 2007, will never be recovered, having likely been broken up and melted down soon after its seizure. Unknown perpetrators at a later stage broke into a police parked car and sprayed foam from a fire extinguisher inside the getaway vehicle, possibly trying to obscure forensic traces. However, as a police team discovered gold particles inside the vehicle matching the purity of the big maple leaf, according to the prosecutors. A police detective who gave evidence described his surprise after being called to a museum shortly after 6 a.m. to investigate the theft of a coin, assuming it was, well, just a coin that was missing. He said that on taking a closer look at the plaque next to the broken display that he discovered that it was, was in fact a 100-kilogram coin, drawing stifled laughter from the courtroom. Dressed predominantly in gray and black, the men who arrived in court covering their faces from the waiting media and magazines with peepholes cut into them, spoke only to confirm their names and addresses to describe their employment status. Three said they were either in education or apprenticeships, and one said he was working as a courier. There you go, you see one of the suspects there with the magazine covering his face there. Judge Dorothy uh, Pruffer, or Pruffer noted the men's decision to remain silent through the trial, but said they could change their minds at any point and emphasize that their decision would not alter the outcome. Two members of the nine-strong legal uh, team representing the men told the court they did not expect their clients to receive a fair trial, referring to the evidence against them as more circumstantial than fact-based. Despite the huge effort in the investigations, including a special commission, 50 telephone surveillance operations, and a mobile phone site analysis, 30 house searches and the deployment of sniffer dogs, the evidence collected is scant and had produced not a single piece of drastic proof. For the complicity of any of the four in the crime, Toraf Nodig, representing uh, YC Remo, told the court. Imagine that. That means they were careful enough not to leave a trace of the gold, which obviously they had to probably solve the coin or somehow cut it 
which would have left gold flakes uh, likely somewhere. So they were very careful, apparently. He said the prosecution case was based mainly on anonymous tip-offs and the questionable uh, bioforensic analysis of CCTV footage of the three brothers at a Berlin train station, which allegedly showed the suspects but not their faces. Stefan Conan, representing a Wisson Remo, accused the media of condemning the men ahead of the trial by reporting on the family's link to organized crime. He said as a result of the association, the police investigated investigation had only been one-sided and based on anonymous tip-offs from possible family rivals. The trial, which is taking place at a youth chamber of Berlin's regional court, is due to the fact that the men were adolescents at the time of the crime, is expected to continue until spring. So, wow, this is going to be uh, quite a long trial for sure. The gold coin was marketed as the world's largest by the Royal Canadian Mint, which said it had a face value of $1 million in Canadian uh, money and could be used as legal tender. Next up in the witness stand will be the head of security at the Boat and Museum, part of uh, British Berlin's Museum Island, which are the city's biggest attractions and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The museum, which has one of the world's biggest coin collections with more than half a million uh, objects, has come under a huge pressure to explain how it was that his alarm system was not triggered on the night of the theft and why an on-duty security guard headed into the museum's cellar precisely at the same time as the crime was carried out. Well, <clears throat> and it could have possibly been there was maybe more than one inside connection. Uh, but, um, you know, obviously somebody turned off the alarm. And there is a picture. This is one of several of these coins. And uh, this um, this one was, I think it was on loan with the Bode Museum or Bode Museum there. But quite fascinating. It is now not the largest uh, gold coin in the world. The Perth Mint has blown that away with their one ton gold coin minted in 2012. And I believe there's only one of those, and it's at the Perth Mint. But uh, there's several of these, five or so. Um, and uh, But quite fascinating indeed. Can you imagine holding this or trying to take it out? It's the size of a tire, but very, very dense and very heavy. Uh, one million dollars Canadian. Fascinating indeed. This is uh, something to... And you know, and thinking about this kind of crime and the fact that the gold... None of it, not a single speck of it has been recovered um, other than when it was found in the car. But nothing tracing it back to the uh, people involved in the crime, if these were indeed guilty parties. But, uh, you know, if they did melt it down, that's all you would need to do. Gold is gold, untraceable, and gold bars, how would it be distributed? My guess is it's probably not been sold yet, um, or at least in, in any uh major level because if somebody brought in a bunch of unmarked gold bars that would raise quite a few eyebrows for sure and suspicions so my guess is this thing is probably being held and uh maybe possibly uh, cast into other objects or things and then sold um you know piecemeal distributed evenly so as to uh, further uh, remove themselves or whoever the criminals are from uh from um uh, it's uh, ties to them. Now, the other thing, too, is if it's not been distributed anywhere as of yet, where is the gold? It's got to be somewhere safe. You know, it wasn't just flushed down the toilet, so to speak, or, you know, put in a buried some, it could have been buried somewhere, could have been inside some concrete cast thing or, you know, the bottom of a, so that's going to be a treasure hunt now is to try to find that 100 kilograms of gold whatever forms it may be. Uh, so we will stay tuned. And I want to thank the Stacking Nerd and Dean Shute for sending this story along to me. It would be quite fascinating to see how this trial turns out. Um, we don't know if these people would be found guilty. And it's going to last for uh, um, several more weeks to a month or a month, a couple of months. Uh, then this thing will be going on for a while. A lot of information will come out and um, or not. And these people could walk free, but apparently they did have ties with the with the mafia apparently in the past. So 
It's understandable why they might be considered suspects, but nonetheless, the burden of proof is on the government, and we'll see how this all pans out. So post your thoughts below on this case, the uh, on the state of the trial for the stolen $1 million gold coin from the Royal Canadian Mint from a museum in Berlin, the Bode Museum. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.